Hello, welcome to the Joe and Zach Survival Channel. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about the Honda generator, the one that we use up here at the tent. And uh, it's a great machine, it's really good gas mileage, I mean 23 hours on a tank of gas. It's real nice. And then and later on in the video we're going to talk a little bit about how we're going to switch things over to being wind power and solar power here in the future and not have to use this quite as much. But the first thing we want to do is go through this generator because anybody that's looking for a generator that's quiet, it, I have had absolutely no trouble with this machine for the four years that I've owned it. And um, so I want to show that and give Honda a good name for that because I love it. Um, so we'll go through that right now. So here's a close-up of the Honda generator. It's an inverter EU3000IS. You can actually uh, hook your computer up to it or whatever. There are no surges or anything like that. Uh, like I said, it gets about, for our use here, about 23 um, hours of use on the three, I think it's 3.3 gallons that it fits in there. You can get three and a half gallons if you really fill it. Um, okay, if we look at the working side on this, over here we've got the on-off switch. It's got a starter in it. You don't have to pull starter. It's got to choke and shut the gas off. I always keep this on the eco throttle so it's always way down. You know, it's not running real fast all the time. Uh, we've got uh, 110 and we've got 220. Up here we've got two circuit breakers. One for the 220 and this one here for the for the AC120. Um, you can actually have DC out. You can get a, a, what do you call it, a battery charger for this. You can charge any of your batteries by just plugging it in. And uh, what else? We've got parallel outlets here if you want to run two of these together. And this one runs 3,000. You can then run 6,000. So. Okay, so when I bought this unit, it was, it was three or four years ago, I think I paid about $1,800. I got it from Northern Tool. And uh, it was on sale at the time. I know the newer one I saw at the game fair, a little bit different design, but about the same size. And uh, it's really quiet. This is the only generator that they allow you to bring into the national parks and actually run because the decibel level is so low. And uh, let's start it up. Quiet enough so we can sit here and talk this close to it. And uh, it's feels really good. It'll grind down a little bit more if something is turned on that's real heavy and wattage. But other than that. Okay, so the camera's still in the same place. And all I did is switched it over to the left. And you can see how, how far away the tent is, the back side of it. When I'm in the tent, and this is a really, really calm night when there's no sound. You can hear a little bit of a rumble when you're on the front porch. But otherwise, you, I never really know it's even running. Unless the lights go out, I know it's uh, out of gas. We put the wind tower in. Uh, we're going to put it out here, behind me here. It's a low swampy area. Uh, the lake's over on this side. In fact, let me just pan that over for you. If we go over here, you can see there's the lake. So we're going to be a couple hundred feet off the lake with this. It'll sit out in here. And I'll, the nice thing is, when since it's swampy, uh, there's not as many trees, so the wind coming from the lake or behind, I, I get more room for the wind with all the big trees around here. That's kind of an issue. The tower is going to be about 100 feet tall, and by being back off the lake like this, nobody's going to be able to see that. Here's, here's Kenmore Freezer. When I run this on the generator, if I run it the 24 hours a day, uh, and it's not a very big freezer, we're talking maybe 32 inches tall, 24 inches wide. I mean, it's pretty deep. It's a very nice freezer, and it works real well, and it freezes stuff really hard. But if I'm running this, and I've got that generator going, it'll cut my 23 hours of gas time by about 6 to 8 hours. It's just amazing how much more gas it uses just to run the one freezer. This here is a floodlight that I have out the back side of the tent. And what I do when I leave, especially in the wintertime or late fall when we don't have as much daylight hours, I'll leave this on when I leave and then go shut off the generator. And then this way when I come up and it's dark, when I flick that generator on, I've got light that's shining right where the, the truck is parked. Okay, so this switch right here is the one that runs that light that I was just showing you outside. Now that light is 500 watts. When that thing comes on, it really cranks the power out of that generator too. Like right now, I can you can't hear the generator. I got the camera set because this light bulb is right above here. You'll see the power. Just watch the light bulb will flicker when I turn this light bulb on. I don't know if you saw that, but I could hear the generator go boom and drop down when I turn that on. So there again, I learned that 500 watt 
bulb out there is costing the right The light bulbs that we use are the fluorescent screw-in type. I call them little swirly bulbs, whatever. And they, you know, you get a 60-watt bulb and it pulls like 7 watts. It's, it's very minimal on what it's doing to the generator, which is great. And I recommend those for this. I don't like them at home. They take too long to warm up. But up here, it's a necessity. And so we say the microwave, I believe that's either a 6 or 700 watt, just a real small microwave. When you turn that on, definitely it draws onto the, the generator. You can hear it. So, but you don't run them for that often. So that's something that you can kind of say, okay, just tall because that's how high the countertop is. And this I have never unplugged and ran the generator to see how much it pulls. We just kind of need the, you know, the refrigerator. And it's got a little freezer, and usually that's enough, you know, to keep your stuff. I've got that bigger freezer like you saw outside. And if I'm up here for like two weeks at a time in the summer when we're doing 85 degrees, it, it just, to go buy ice every other day, even with my really good Coleman coolers, you know, that adds up, and it's time-consuming, so you run that freezer. But with gas at $4 a gallon, I'm thinking ice might be the best route to go. But this refrigerator, it's a good refrigerator. doesn't seem to draw too hard. I'm not sure what it draws. Another electric appliance, we've got the TV up here, but it really isn't turned on all that much. So, I mean, more in the wintertime if we're up here deer hunting and you get back in and there's nothing to do outside because it's cold and dark. But otherwise, uh, I'll listen to the radio. Don't really turn the TV on for much. Okay, so now we've looked at the generator and everything that the generator can do and, and how different appliances are pulling more power and more power. And you just kind of learn as you go on that. And, I mean, for me, I'm 44 years old. And, you know, is it going to make a big deal if I have to put in a couple more gallons of gas into that machine? It's not going to. But at the same time, like Zachary, he's 16 years old. And, and the stuff that we learn here as far as like with the water and how much water a person uses at home versus up here and what you can get by with it's amazing so when i look at this here and zachary at 16 years old if he was filling up that generator a four dollars a gallon makes a very big ass deal so they're the kids are learning so much earlier you know that the next generation is going to be they're going to take care of this mess that we're in right now but that said the generator okay it runs 23 hours on one tank on like a minimal load and that's three and a half gallons, so at four dollars a gallon, that's costing me fifteen dollars a day, roughly. So now with the wind, we're going to put wind in here, and then we're going to add solar to it because we want to stay completely off grid. So, and if you go to Northern Tool, and I know I bought the generator at Northern Tool, and I don't buy that much stuff at Northern Tool, but they seem to have what a person needs if you're going to do this off grid stuff. So, anyway, they've got a complete wind power package. In fact, and let's I tell you what, I'm going to take you over to the Internet here. This show is what you. I was talking about. And again, you know, this is from Northern Tool, but I'm not trying to be some salesman for Northern Tool. To be honest, I haven't even looked around to see if I can find it cheaper somewhere else, and I will do that. You know, I'm just like you guys. I, I look on the Internet, you find this stuff, you learn about it, and you go from there. Well, this one here, you know, it's a complete 1,800-watt wind power package. I like it. I mean, it, it two and a half miles per hour wind, it starts making power. And uh, the generator itself puts out 600 watts up to. And it has an inverter and a charger, and you can also hardwire into it. But what I like about it is that you can add solar to it if you want to, and that can hardwire into this system, and it'll, whatever it does, I don't know, make solar into electricity, however that works, I have no clue. And you can hardwire it into your house, or it has the four plugins on it. So. Anyway, for me up here, I'm just looking for something halfway cheap, you know, that would make power. And I think this would just be a great the thing. The wind generator thing that I'm talking about. And you know, I kind of want the wind, and Zachary, he wants the solar. And, and since it takes them both, it'd be great. And it said on there that you can get a 30% tax credit, maybe. And I'm usually used to the government taking money from me, not <laughs> giving it back. But if I can get it, I'll take it. So that's great. But if we go through this thing. At four dollars per gallon of gas, it costs them roughly fifteen dollars a day to run that generator, and that's with a, a regular minor load. If I plug that um, freezer into it, I'm, it's costing me about twenty dollars a day to run it, and so that means that if I were to buy that system for it's like two thousand dollars, you know, plus tax, we're talking twenty one hundred and thirty dollars. That means that even on my normal load at fifteen dollars a day, I'm 142 days of being up here, and I don't live here all the time. But, you know, more and more and more time gets spent here. In 142 days, the wind generator would be paid for. And if it's more, you know, if, if I'm running that, uh, that um, uh, freezer on it, 
I'm talking about 100 to 110 bands before it would be paid for. And it, the reason why I don't have electricity in here is because it's about 3,000 feet to get a run over here. The only other place on the lake, my folks have one on the other side, and they had to pay a ton of money to get power run in on the bottom of the lake. And <clears throat> for me to cut it in from there to here, you know, it would be roughly eight to nine thousand dollars. And you know, and that's fine, sure, we put it in, we, you know, we have power, great. But the only problem with that is, is that once all that eight or nine thousand dollars is spent, then I've got an electric bill every month. And if I want to keep this place off grid, I, you can add a lot of solar panels to this whole wind thing and a lot of batteries, because you'd want more than two batteries before you're even going to get close to that amount of money. So, but we need a tower. So I want to show you guys a tower that I found. And we were doing a job um, in the middle of Minnesota, and they have these towers that are from 60 to 100 feet tall that people have their um, their TV antennas on. Well, now the TV antennas, they don't use them anymore because we have digital. And we happen to be doing this one. They took it down. It's a 100-foot tower. And uh, I'm going to look and see. I have a video I want to show you of this tower. It's going to be a cell phone video, so it's probably going to be kind of not that great. I guess I haven't even looked at it. I sent it to Zachary on the phone, but I know that I've got it. So let's take a look at that.